Guys, take a look at this beautiful Tudor Black Bay Black ETA version on its uh, oyster style bracelet. Uh, this thing was discontinued a few years ago. It's starting to creep up in price on the secondary market and there's not as many examples out there for sale as there has been in years past. Now this thing is trading for about, oh, the high 3000s, just about $4,000. Again, as of making this video, the time of making this video. And I think it's a great buy and one to keep in mind if you're really in it for the long game. If you're looking five, 10, 15 years into the future, I think this is gonna be a great collectible. Now for a few reasons, one, this has the Tudor Rose logo, the logo that Tudor hasn't used in decades. And I think it looks beautiful. If you look at the 12 o'clock triangular marker, it's nice and elongated and it comes down and barely kisses the top of this Tudor Rose logo. And you see the grain and grit of the textured dome dial. You see the rose or gilt accents to the applied markers and controversial snowflake hands. I think it's just an absolutely beautiful piece and it's nice to see the rose here. Uh, it's nice to see the rose in the crown. So there's some good symmetry and balance. The new version has a rose in relief on the crown and the Tudor shield on the logo. And design wise, I don't think it's as strong. It's a little eclectic. And these little details, they don't matter to a normal person, but they make a big difference to us watch collectors that really get into the hobby and enjoy learning about the history of a brand and everything about the model, right? If you look at the rotor self-winding text, that's traditionally three words that have always been on Tudor watches. And a lot of times they're curved like the self-winding text is printed here. And visually, I think it looks very balanced. I think it looks very sharp. If you contrast that with the modern in-house version, you guys can see very linear contemporary printing and the printing is set a little bit low in the real estate of the subsection of the dial. It's almost too close to that five and seven o'clock applied marker and uh, not quite balanced, I think, between the six o'clock and the hand stack. So visually, I, I, I don't think there's anything technically wrong with the new in-house version, right? With the Tudor shield and the text placement and form, but it's not quite as attractive as what you'd find on an ETA version. Another thing I enjoy about the ETAs is the way they wear. So the mid case is a little thinner due to the thinner ETA movement that's within the case. The in-house movements from Tudor, I think are excellent, right? Every one I've seen on a time grapher has had very strong amplitude, little to no beat error, and the accuracy in multiple positions. It's kind of scary how fine-tuned it is. I mean, these things barely deviate on a day-to-day -day basis as you're wearing the watch. They're very accurate. And they're anti-magnetic. They've got a free-sprung balance set in a full balance bridge. The architecture's nice. The only con is the movement is a little thick and that's reflected in the mid case, how thick the case back is and uh, overall the wear on wrist. The new in-house versions, they're kind of tall, they're kind of thick. And although I think they're good buys and certainly worthy of consideration, if you're looking to spend that three, $4,000 for the first time, I think it's a great one to consider along with the Omega Seamaster but um, they just don't quite have the finesse and feel as these ETA versions that have been discontinued. So, I mean, coming back to this, the details, the way it fits, and the fact that specifically this black bezel version was only produced for eight months just adds to the desirability and the collectability in the future. So if you've got $4,000 and you're really, you know, looking to buy a nice Tudor Black Bay, maybe you've looked at the Seamaster, I think, the ETA Black Bay, specifically the black one, is the way to go. The color is the most like a Submariner when it comes to feel, right? It's not as bold as the blue or the red. And uh, again, that low production number, which would be low for almost any brand, but very low or very short in duration for Tudor and Rolex, I think is just icing on the cake. So is this going to jump up to a $10,000 watch in a year or two? I don't think so. But uh, you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, I think they're gonna be hard to find. And I think it's not unreasonable to assume that this would at least trade for double or more 
what the retail was back when it was in production. Now, I've got to make a note here that I think is a little disgusting. It's, uh, it's kind of sad, but it's a reality of the watch scene that we uh, navigate today. And that is fakes, replicas. Uh, they already make replicas of the ETA Black Bay, sadly. And they're fairly convincing if you buy a higher priced one. And I think maybe five years from now, 10 years from now, when they have had the time to study the differences, the things that they couldn't get quite right, it's going to be very hard to spot the real thing if you're not an expert and you really know what you're looking for. And that's a sad thing. When a watch increases in value and there's money to be made, immoral people will try to take advantage of that situation. So in coming years, honestly, guys, I think good, prime, authentic examples are going to be fewer and further between and the scene to buy on the secondary market is gonna be a little bit harder to navigate. So, what would I say? As of right now, January of 2020, I think if you're on the fence about getting one, there's never gonna be a better time than now. They're only gonna be harder to find and harder to find genuine ones. And really, down the line, it's gonna be the one to buy, I think, over an in-house Black Bay GMT, which is a very hot model right now. Or even the Black Bay 58, which is probably even more popular than the GMT is at the moment. Now, let's say you own one already and you've been noticing the prices starting to increase. Let's say you spent maybe $2,500, $2,800 a few years ago and you see, hey, I can make an easy thousand bucks if I sell this and I can buy a Speedmaster or you know whatever else is on your list at the moment. Um, I wouldn't say that's a wise idea. If you really want to sell one and it's an excellent condition, certainly you're welcome to email me and reach out to me because I, I would be interested in acquiring one. But I would say to you this, keep it, hold on to it. I think it's only going to get more valuable in coming years. So don't cash out for a thousand now when in 10 years from now, you have that much more of a desirable piece and a more valuable piece and enjoy it in the meantime, wear it. I, you guys can see this one, belonging to my friend Mike, who I'm borrowing this from, is got some uh, hairline wear, the clasp is a little scratched, and I love using a sport watch. Let me show you my Rolex uh, GMT Master II. I wear this camping, I take this boating, I take this on vacation when I go travel and I visit Niagara Falls. Uh, it's just a great watch to wear fishing and horseback riding and you know, making memories and enjoying the watch. So if you have one, hold on to it, use it, enjoy it, love it, uh, put it in a safe if you want to. That's not a bad thing, but I think it's a great asset to have right now and it's only going to get better. So guys, let me tell you, I think honestly, this is a good watch to purchase if you're looking for the long term. Uh, if you don't care about the long term, maybe you're not a fan of the color combination or whatnot. There are other awesome watches out there, but you know, 10 years from now, they're not going to be worth what this one is worth in my opinion. So thanks for taking the time to watch today, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, I would, uh, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button. I try to bring detail focused uh, presentations on watches here to YouTube and I would greatly appreciate your support. So again, thanks for watching. Reach out with any questions. I'll see you guys in the comments section and I'll catch you in the next video.